Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to our press conference tonight to announce West Virginia University's 12th Director of Athletics. Um, out of respect of our two speakers, please at this time silence your cell phones. Our, um, our format tonight is President E. Gordon B. will start our program off with some remarks. He will then introduce Director Lyons to you after his remarks, it is, uh, the program is open to the media for questions. So with that, I'd like to bring up President E. Gordon Gee to start off our press conference. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not, 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 i am Welcoming home, uh, son of West Virginia, which is uh, a special time that we always do. And um, and not a prodigal son either. I might note that I'm the prodigal son. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Shane has uh, Shane has been had a remarkable career, as you all know. Before I start, though, I want to make sure that we introduce the first family of uh, of intercollegiate athletics, uh, Emily and. Uh, and the family here, uh, there's Brooke and there's, there's Cameron. Why don't you guys stand up? Let's, let, let's introduce these guys, okay? And, and, and Cameron's going to be a quick contributor to our athletic programs here in uh, the high schools, and Brooke is going to do very well with as an equestrian. Uh, Jim Daly is here uh, and uh, is the chairman of our board. We have other members of our board here, but Jim, you just wave on behalf of everyone. I'm sure appreciate that. And then, uh, and then I, I want to particularly acknowledge the fact that uh, we have been blessed with great leadership at this, uh, at this institution, and our athletic program has been particularly blessed. Uh, uh, Oliver is not able to be with us, as you know. Um, he is assuming a significant role um, at the at the NCAA as the chief operating officer. Um, I always hate to lose a good person, but um, when you lose someone for the right reason, it's it's, uh, it's something we all take great pride in. And of course, we're delighted that we have an equally uh, fine person who's joining them. Kelly Cunningham, I don't know. Kelly, where are you? Right here. Stand up. I want to introduce Kelly. Uh, Kelly's done a wonderful job. Um, both as our, as our associate athletic director and now as our interim and continue to do so. And Kelly, I just want to acknowledge publicly the, the great work you've done. Uh, Shane Lyons uh, um, has had a remarkable career. Um, one of those careers that is almost storied in the sense that uh, if one wants to think about becoming an athletic leader, as Cameron does, um, he could follow in the foot of his father. Um, those steps have led him, obviously, through this institution, both graduate and undergraduate, and then on to a variety of roles. Uh, a decade at the NCAA, great experience. A decade at the uh, at the uh, athletic uh, at, at the um, at the Atlantic Coast Conference. Uh, in between. Uh, obviously spent uh, a considerable time at uh, Texas Tech and now, of course, has been the COO and the Deputy Director at uh, the University of Alabama, a story program. So without, uh, without uh, further embellishment, I can just say that that is a, uh, that is a career that has, that has led him to the heights of intercollegiate athletics. Uh, it has allowed him on a national scale to do things that very few people have been able to do. He knows people, he understands people, uh, he understands the values of what we're trying to do. But, but the reason that we hired Shane is a very simple one. It's the fact that not only is he great at what he does, he has great values, he has uh, a real belief in this institution, in this state, and in its future. And he has, uh, and he has a real feeling uh, for what we can accomplish at this institution. It's not simply about athletics, it's about a great university in a great state doing great things. And so ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our new athletic friend, Shane Lyons. I'll put this hat on to see if it'll uh, mess with my hair in there a little bit. But, uh, but it's great to be home. Um, Dr. Gee, I, I appreciate the confidence that you've given in me to, to help run this athletic department in this great university for, uh, for years to come. Uh, there's nothing like the ability to come home and help your alma mater. And 26 years ago, I never thought I'd have this opportunity 
the big full circle and come back and see some of the great people I've worked with before, some of the people in this room that I've known for a number of years and helped continue to help this department be something very special that this state as well as this university can be proud of. The thank yous, obviously, to, to President Gee, to Jim Daly for, for your confidence and support through this process, to my family, my mom and dad, Dave and Sue Lyons, who are here from, from Parkersburg, my extended family, uh, my siblings, my sister, and nieces and nephews, and uh, my brother who's not here, my other sister who's not here, the continued support that they've given me over the years. Uh, Obviously, I've been all around, around the country the past 26 years, so to be able to come back to, to West Virginia and be closer to them is something that's very, very special. I want to say for my family, they, they've been on this journey with me for a number of years and giving me the support, the support at home, um, and being able to, to help me through this. And, and I said this on my earlier press conference, this is our professional career. I did not make this uh, decision lightly without taking them into consideration the transition that goes into this. So we look really forward to making Morgantown our home and West Virginia State is the state that we want to be in. So we look forward to that. I'll make them stand up again and introduce themselves, but I think it embarrass them a little bit more. So I'll keep them from doing that. The, uh, the thing I really wanted to thank is the people that have helped me in, to get this position in my life. And I've, I've been blessed to work at many great places, as Dr. Gee has mentioned. And, you know, I didn't do this by myself. And I, I'm a, very humble when I say that. There's people that I've been associated with, the, the NCAA, um, the Atlantic Coast Conference, Texas Tech, the Big South. Obviously here, when I, when I started here, I worked in undergraduate in sports communications. I worked through the ticket office here. So there's a lot of people throughout my professional career that have played a part in who I am today. And I can't thank them enough for what they've shown me, how to act as a professional, how to grow and, and move forward. But I also want to stand here before you today as a humble servant of the Mountaineer family. I also want to pause and talk about another chapter that's coming to close in my professional career, and that's at the University of Alabama. I really appreciate the opportunity that they've given to me, the late Mount Moore, current athletic director Bill uh, Battle, uh, President Bonner, and Chancellor Witt for the assurance and, and the support they placed in me at Alabama the last three years and the opportunity they've given me to continue to grow. So I, I appreciate that. Everyone the last week, the fans, employees, coaches have been so welcoming since this announcement and it's truly exciting to be coming back. So the support has been overwhelming. I can't wait to get on board and get started and, and working day to day with each and every one of you. You got to hear a little bit this week about who I am, my background, my professional career, but today I wanted to talk to you about when I come on board. And I talked a little bit about my first 90 to 120 days and what that's going to be. And it's no secret that I want to come in here and listen and learn and then lead this department. So no sweeping changes coming in. It's a matter of just seeing what's happened in this department and helping to continue to grow in the right way. I won't lose sight of one thing, and that's for sure that this department will always uh, support the greater mission of the university. And we will hold that true in each and every one of our decisions that we make uh, from this department. As I embark on this new opportunity, we will use the following core values and everything that, as a department, that we want to do. First and foremost, I think, is the integrity. We're going to do things right on and off the, the playing fields. Accountability, we will take actions, uh, responsibilities for our actions. The collaboration, we need to all be able to work together, not only within the department as a teamwork, but also outside the department with the university, within the Big 12 conference, um, and with the NCAA. Uh, it's going to be nice to know that Oliver will be there, so we have a great contact with him and any issues that, that come up, we'll be able to do that. I'd like to bring also the core values of innovation. You know, I, I want to be able to do things differently than we've done in the past. We need to think outside the box and understand there may be better solutions to some of the things that we're currently doing. So we'll bring that. And last but not least is excellence. We, we want to continue working towards perfection, knowing that perfection can never be attained, but achieving via the effort is what I want to see within this department and within this university. So 
with that, you know, there's a number of issues that are coming to the forefront within the NCAA. You know, we live in an era right now that there's more challenges in the traditional collegiate model than ever before as it relates to the NCAA governance uh, model, the players' rights, scholarships, uh, enforcement, and many other topics that we can improve in college athletics in the future. And we've got to continue to, to look at those, and we don't always have so much of those things in our control, but that's how that's going to impact the department and how it's going to impact our student athletes and coaches. We need to make sure that we're on top of that. So how are we going to get through these changes that are happening now as well as in the future? Again, I think we'll keep our sights on the uh, primary objectives. And those objectives you know, will be making sure that we graduate our student athletes. Uh, we have fiscal responsibility. We do what's best in the best interest of our student athletes. And again, we continue building and maintaining first class uh, facilities for our, our student athletes and coaches to train and compete. You know, I look forward to the completion of the, the baseball stadium. I also look forward to the uh, improvements that's coming and, and being involved in the, the renovations in, in the Coliseum as well as the, the football facility. So those are great things that's happening at this university and I look forward to being part of that. We have a vision that we want to, 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 we have to have a vision where we want to go as this department. And we transition to that, the, the ultimate obligation we have is to provide every team, every coach, every student athlete with a chance to win. That chance to, to win in competition, in the classroom, and in life after graduation. We have to be consistently competitive across the board, but I want our people to have fun while we do that. We want us to be proud of where we are, the school, the state, what we represent, and for all of us to be certain that we're headed for success. We have great assets to work with. Our student athletes are, are great students. We have excellent facilities, great coaches, uh, top people helping our student athletes in all facets of their life. The greatest asset we have though in this state, in this university, this is what brought me back to Morgantown in West Virginia is our fan base. The fan base is second to none. The, the support that they give to this university, the support to this state, and we want to give back to them something that they're very, very proud of and that we as an athletic department can do through our competition and our success, uh, success both in the classroom and the competition fields. During the evaluation plan, I, listen, I plan to listen to everyone in the many areas of our athletic department to, uh, to determine what direction we need to head and what our strengths and weaknesses may be. As I said a moment ago, I plan to spend much of the first month of, of this job here with my eyes open and my mind open to, to changes and, and uh, see what we want ahead. And, and I'll ask each Mountaineer to also look and do the same. Well, I, might, I may have center stage right now for this brief moment. I hope you can understand that this opportunity is something that I don't take lightly and the undertaking is not about me I'll tell the coaches that, I'll tell the student athletes that, and it's uh, something that's it's bigger than us, and we as Mountaineers are going to make this university and state very proud. Thank you, and go Mountaineers. some of the national level challenges over there with, with the determinants, the Power 5 Conference, NCAA things. Do you have a perspective of like what balance of that's going to take your time, how much those level issues versus running the department, 
the West Virginia aspect of it? Yeah, there's definitely going to be, it's a great question, there's going to definitely be a balance. You know, I think the sweeping changes you're going to have to be on top of is how it's going to impact collegiate model we know it today. So it's, it's definitely going to be a balance of understanding that, obviously working through the Big 12 office and Commissioner Bowlesby and understanding those issues. Um, you know, I can't take away from the university. We have great people working for us here, but at the same time as being able to manage what's happening here on this campus, but also looking at what changes could impact the department is, is that something that I'll have to, to balance for sure. What are the challenges of working with the size budget that you have here versus obviously the bigger one that you had in Alabama? I'm sorry, say one more time. What are the challenges you have working with the budget here as opposed to obviously Alabama at a much bigger budget? I think there's, no matter where you're at, there's challenges with the budget. Um, Alabama's budget is much, much, uh, much larger, but at the same time, it's you do with what you have with the resources that you have. So we'll look at it, we're going to balance it. Um, I think our budget is pretty consistent from what I've seen from probably the, the majority of NCAA Power Five conferences. You have some schools out there as in Alabama, and Ohio State, uh, Texas, which has you know, very, very large orange budgets. But I think what budget we have, I think we have a lot to work with and we'll be able to look at those resources to be able to give back to our coaches, to our student athletes, to be successful with that. You said that fan support has been overwhelming since uh, you got the bid. If you can paint a picture for us, what does that look like? Is that your email inbox flooded? Is that people stopping in the store? What, what does that look like for you? But it's 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 definitely the emails, the text messages, and then that's that's from some fans I don't know. That's obviously from colleagues that I've known you know, throughout the, the uh, collegiate uh, my collegiate career. So those are come from all different types of sources, and you know, especially those who you know again I mentioned earlier that have had an impact in my my career over the years. You know, even though you leave jobs, you leave different places, you don't leave those friendships and, and those professional uh, people that you can go back and get advice from. So, you know, I'll continue leaning on those individuals, and it's great to have them as, as a, a, a possible crutch out there if you ever get into a situation to, to be able to help me help this department. In that vein, what discussions, if any, have you had with Oliver about the direction of the athletic department and maybe things he had in motion that were, you know, Keep, keep yeah, our, our discussions have been very brief one night when I first talked to him about it. But I think he painted a, a, a good picture for me of where this department is heading and what he's done in his time here. Obviously, that's one of the things that's been very appealing to come here, the work that's been done and how I can continue to build on that foundation. So, you know, I applaud him for what he's done here and, and wish him the best in his career. Is there anything that glaring that you worked on or with in Alabama that you see here that you want to implement? Is there any one thing that maybe jumps out at you? You know, I, I think the biggest thing, Mitch, is making sure, you know, our facilities and, and our competition and practice facilities, and that's something very big, and obviously also making sure from the academic side that our student athletes are successful, you know, outside of the, uh, or inside the classroom and making sure that from our academic services area that we have the resources there to make sure that they have uh, the ability to be, be successful. But, you know, I think that I've been given the opportunity to Alabama with some of the things they've done with their facilities and fundraising different things to upgrade those things, and I look forward to bringing them here. So, and you come from, a, from Alabama where the culture is a football culture <coughs> and unlike maybe anywhere else. What is the difference between that and here, and how can you take what you discovered there and, and move it here? Well, again, I think it, it's a matter of coming back and supporting your programs and understanding that, you know, what it takes to try to build that program and, and facilities and recruiting. Um, it's, a, it's, you know, it's all about teamwork, and that's the collaboration that I want is, you know, in that in the recruiting process, it's just not your football or your basketball. It's the entire department and how do we help recruit those young men and young ladies to be successful. And I think that's what they have at Alabama, that everybody's working together in that teamwork and that collaboration. And I think I can bring that here as well and, and make us continue to build on what we have and can be, be successful.
coaching, at least one coaching her, her decision to make, and obviously the other ones in the future. Is there anything in your past, the positions that you've been, that help you build toward that? Or have you thought about the criteria you apply to making decisions about hires and changes? Yeah, I, you know, I think for sure that you have to, first and foremost, of course, getting somebody that can do the job and understand you know, what sport they're coaching and what success and track record that they've had previously. The other important thing is making sure that fit the culture of this university and this department. And you know, if you can get all those ingredients together, I think you can have a successful program. So, you know, looking at the uh, the hire, which would be the volleyball coach, I know that there's been work being done right now, and being able to look at those you know, different type of criteria and bringing that forward to making sure that they can be successful here, and that's what.